Hello everyone and welcome to today's edition of Arkansas Alive. All this week, I want to deal with lies, deception, and the final solution. Sounds like a real, oh, <laughs> deep and dark, dark um, title, but I think you'll be blessed by it from the scriptures. It'll give you an idea of where we're headed and the glory of God that we're going to experience. So don't go away. Stay tuned. The first thing <clears throat> that I would like to do today uh, as we uh, start the week off with Arkansas Live is uh, to call attention to our beautiful set decorations behind us. Uh, thanks to our director and producer. Uh, thanks to David Osborne, our director and producer, Amber Sevilla. And I really appreciate the extra effort that they put in with this beautiful set of the old city of Jerusalem uh, behind us. I've been to Jerusalem a half a dozen times or more, and there's no place on the earth that's more beautiful than the old city of Jerusalem. So enjoy while we minister to you this week. Turn to Isaiah chapter 14, and we're going to start in verse 12. Now, let me explain uh, why I'm teaching this. It's, it sounds dark and mysterious, but it's really not. It's enlightening. It's revealing. Lies, deception, and the final solution. And we're going we're gonna to start at the end and come back to the beginning. You know, God did that. The Bible says that he always spoke the end from the beginning. In Revelation, he told the apostle John, he said, I want you to write the things that have been, that are, and will be, past, present, and future. Now, the final solution even though this is the end, uh, we're going to start at the beginning to show you the final solution from three different perspectives. The final solution for Satan, the <laughs> the and it's not good. <laughs> the final solution for Satan, he deserves every bit of what he's going to get. Uh, we're going to talk about the final solution for the church, and we're going to talk about lies and deception. And uh, I hope you are blessed. The Holy Spirit's the teacher, and he will minister to you uh, through the Word of God. Okay, the final solution I got from um, reading and studying about the Holocaust. Um, and let me read you just a little bit uh, about this from uh, an acquaintance of mine. I met this man uh, last year, I believe it was. Uh, down in Florida at one of our conferences that we held. I am uh, on the board of NACL, National Association of Christian Lawmakers, founded by Senator uh, Jason Rapert. And uh, we had our first conference in Florida in uh, 2020. And Andy Andrews was one of our conference speakers. These are legislators that come from all over America. Uh, Senator Rapert has uh, recognized uh, many of these lawmakers from 25 states. That's half of the United States. They represent half the population uh, of the country. And they're born-again Christians. They love Jesus. And they're trying to make a difference as Christians in their state legislators. And so he invited Andy Andrews, who had written a book. I, I saw it several years ago, and I bought it just because of the title. It's called How to Kill 11 Million People. And you might think that's a terrible title, but when you open it up and he begins to share with you how the Holocaust came about, how the Jews were lied to and deceived. Hitler hated the Jews. He wanted to create a pure race, Germans, of course, and he wanted to get rid of everybody else. They had political prisoners. They had Jewish prisoners. They had homosexual prisoners. They had gypsy prisoners, people that he wanted to get rid of. He wanted to exterminate them from the face of the earth. The problem that he ran into, of course, this is the beginning of uh, uh, anti-Semitic spirit, Jew hatred spirit. The problem that he ran into was that he could not kill them fast enough. 
He set out to kill 11 million people. He only wound up murdering 6 million people. And there are other world leaders that have done similar things, even in greater numbers. Joseph Stalin uh, killed 40 million of his own people. This is under uh, communism, Marxism, socialism. So you can tell where that kind of government goes. Uh, in Mao Zedong in China, he killed 60 million people. Now, lest you look down your nose at them and say they're horrible, uh, demonic people, uh, in America, we have killed 63 million people. We have murdered 63 million children, unborn babies, in their mother's womb. So America cannot throw stones at these other dictators, even though they were demon-possessed, because we've done exactly the same thing, and even in greater numbers. And if we don't stop this, if we don't deal with this and stop it, uh, we will suffer the same final solution in result as these other countries. But Hitler had a problem. How do I get rid of, of course, remember, 11 million people? He only killed six, but 11 million was his goal. How do I get rid of 11 million people? Now, these are the gory details. He could not kill them fast enough and dispose of their bodies by just shooting them one at a time. I mean, they had mass execution squads that would kill just rows and rows of people, shooting them in the back of the head, and they would fall on the bodies of the people that had been shot before. So they just stacked up, and then they brought a bulldozer in and covered up uh, the graves with dirt. But he wasn't really uh, aware of how to uh, get rid of their bodies. They were stacking up. There were so many of them. As you can imagine, millions of people. And so one of his henchmen, one of his generals, came up with the idea of gassing, of shooting, and roasting or burning uh, their bodies. And I have been to one of the concentration camps in Austria, uh, Mauthausen. Jeannie and I went several years ago. Um, and we went through that uh, crematorium. We went through the, the barracks that they lived in until they were uh, gassed and put in the ovens. And uh, out the other end came their ashes. So the final solution uh, that was developed by the Nazis was to ga shoot, gas, and uh, burn, cremate uh, their bodies. But I want you to listen to the words of Hitler himself. Remember, we're talking about lies, deception, and the final solution. Now, I'm teaching this to you, so hopefully the Holy Spirit will awaken you to the seriousness of the time that we're living in because you can make a difference. Hitler said, uh, he, he said to his inner circle, men do not think. What a profound statement. It's true. People don't think. Make the lie big. Make it simple. Keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. Now, that is profound. Listen to it again. Men do not think. Make the lie big. Make it simple. Keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. If you watch politicians long enough, you will discern, if you're a thinking person, you will discern that they have a rhetoric. They have a narrative and they just keep repeating it. Doesn't matter whether it's true or not. It's just repetitious. It's just said over and over and over again. And they're basing the results off of these statements. People do not think. If you're going to uh, persuade people, deceive people, and that's how you kill 11 million people, according to Andy Andrews, is you lie to them. Make the lie big, make it simple, and keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. 
Now, we've experienced this in our generation in the last decade or so. And I'm going to quote some of the things that we've heard. Read my lips, no new taxes. That was a lie. But it was said often enough to get people to believe it so they would vote for the individual. I did not have sex with that woman. That was another lie. But it was said often enough till people believed it. If you like your doctor, you can keep him. Another lie that eventually was shown to be a lie. But it was said over and over enough times that people believed it. So how do you kill 11 million people? You lie to them. And according to Hitler, make the lie big. Make it big enough. Now, I'm not trying to create doubt. I'm trying to create a, a thinking mentality in you. Become a thinker. Think about things. Meditate on them. And he went on to say, um, a great mass of the people will more easily fall victim to a big lie than a small one. You know, again, that's so profound. People will fall prey, a victim, to a big lie uh, rather than a small one. Now, um, according to historic records, uh, even at the height of his power in 1945, Hitler and the Nazi political party boasted of only 8 million members. So the remaining 90% of Germans, teachers, doctors, ministers, and farmers, did what? They were not members of the Nazi party, but they did nothing. They just stood by and watched. And, you know, they've made movies about this, the trials of Nuremberg, and the German people were embarrassed and incensed and angered because they did not know what was going on. Major leaders said, we did not know, we did not know. How could you not know when millions of people were being murdered systematically and disposed of? Mothers and fathers held their voices, covered their eyes, closed their ears. The vast majority of an educated population accepted their salaries and avoided the uncomfortable truth that lingered over them like a serpent waiting to strike. When the Nazis came for their children, it was too late. They were more interested in their own personal benefits, their own personal salaries, their own personal lives than they were the lives of others until the Nazis came for their children. And, and let me just give you a, a kind of a parallel here. Uh, that same uh, spirit of Marxism, communism, is coming for our children right now. We've seen this in Virginia, even here in our home state of Arkansas. And I, I just want to commend the people that are standing up against this and running for positions on the school board uh, positions in the city, running for political office, uh, for governor, mayor, city officials, school board, very, very important. And we have to expose the lies to the truth. You don't have to condemn the people, but you have to expose the lies uh, so that people will be aware because people are not thinking and they're believing big lies. You're not going to uh, resolve anything, change anything, uh, just by ignoring it. It's not going to go away. You have to challenge it. You have to go face to face. And when you find politicians that are willing to stand up against these things, those are the people you need to put in office because they're going to stand. If they're telling the truth, they're going to stand against this. All right, let's go to Isaiah 14, and let's look at the final solution of Satan, because Satan is behind all of this anti-Semitism, all of the abortion, all of the lies. He's, he's the head liar. He's the chief liar. And uh, when he possesses people, they lie. 
Now, in Isaiah 14, I want you to listen to this talking about uh, Lucifer as um, his role in the final solution, what's going to happen to him. In uh, Isaiah 14, 12, Now art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Notice, weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Now, there's no doubt that Lucifer wanted to be God. When God created Adam in his own image and likeness, a spirit being, and he put him in the garden and he gave him dominion and authority over the creation, Satan was infuriated. He was furious. He had to stop this man, Adam. He had to stop him. He had to eradicate him off of the face of the earth. He had to get him out of God's plan because you got to remember that Lucifer was an archangel and he was given authority over the Garden of Eden before Adam came along. We're going to read that in a minute in Ezekiel. So Lucifer was, you could say, the first ruler of the earth until Adam was created. Adam was created in the image and likeness of God, and God told him, I want you to take dominion over the earth, over all the work of my hands. Well, well, well Satan was furious, and he wanted to destroy Adam. He wanted to stop him from his assignment. He, he wanted to uh, prevent Adam from being able to walk in that authority, and that's what the challenge was in the Garden of Eden. But now notice this next verse, verse 15. Here's the final solution uh, for Lucifer, for Satan. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, and they that see you narrowly look upon you and consider you will say, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms? People are going to look at Satan and they're going to wonder how in the world did he uh, do so much damage? One plain, simple answer. Deception. He lied to the people. He lied to Adam and Eve. And that's where the lying and the deception started. Now, Satan's final solution is eternal damnation in hell, the lake of fire, to be tormented day and night forever and ever. Look at Revelation chapter 20, and I want you to see this uh, in your Bible, beginning with verse 1. Uh, this is the Apostle John. I saw an angel come from heaven. Of course, Lucifer was an archangel until he fell having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, during the great tribulation period, Satan is going to have a heyday. Um, the Antichrist, uh, the false prophet, the beast system are all going to be in operation. Satan's going to be the head of all of it. But this angel that, that John saw, he saw an angel come down and he saw Satan bound uh, for a thousand years. That's the millennial reign of Christ. After the tribulation, then Jesus comes back, the second coming, and he sets up his millennial kingdom. Isaiah refers to that in Isaiah 7, Isaiah 9, and talks about Jesus, Messiah, and it says the government will be on his shoulders. So, you know, uh, we're going to have a godly government. We're going to have divine government for a thousand years and Satan will be bound. But listen to the rest of it. Um, and let's see. 
judgment was given unto them. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. These are the tribulation saints that are martyred, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and in their hands. And um, they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again till the thousand years was finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. That's the, the body of Christ, the church company. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be exposed out of his prison and he shall go out to deceive the nations. Did you get that? Lies, deception, and the final solution. We're getting ready to read the final solution, what happens to Satan. After those thousand years, he goes and he deceives the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog, Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is at the sand of the sea. Now this is the this is the Armageddon that we hear so much about. Uh, this is not Russia's conquest or attemptive, uh, attempt to conquest of Israel. This is, that's a different war. This is the, the end of the tribulation period. And here is, uh, uh, excuse me, this is the end of the millennium, a thousand years. And Satan uh, begins to deceive the nations. Gog, Magog, go together to battle. Uh, there's uh, without number. And verse uh, 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and uh, will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that's the final solution uh, of the devil, the enemy of our souls. He is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Uh, he is going to suffer and be tormented uh, forever and ever, for eternity. So he will be tormented, uh, tormented <laughs> uh, day and night forever and ever. Satan has always wanted to be God. I said that to you earlier. Uh, we find this in Ezekiel chapter 28. Let's go over to verse 11. Ezekiel 28 and verse 11. Now, all this has to do with the final solution. Satan wanted to be God in the beginning. That's what the war was about in heaven. He wanted to be God. I uh, read it to you in Isaiah 14. He was cast out from heaven. And Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, I beheld Satan fall from heaven. He was thrown to the earth. He's been lying and deceiving ever since. Now, I don't know about you, but this helps understand what's going on and why it's going on. Lies, deception, and the final solution. There is a final solution for Satan and for the church. And that's what I want you to know. So you won't be tormented by the things that are going on in our culture today. You won't be deceived by those that falsely prophesy out of their own spirit. Uh, you won't be deceived by false doctrine or winds of doctrine. Uh, and you, you won't fall for the lies that Satan perpetrates, no matter through whom they come. Because Jesus said, and the scripture said over and over, take heed that no man deceive you. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, You will seal up the sum full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You have been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, this is what's called the law of double reference. There are two entities being addressed here. Uh, one is a natural earthly ruler, and the other is the spiritual ruler, Satan. And he said, you've been in Eden, the garden of God. I told you earlier, 
Satan, Lucifer, was in the garden. He had authority over the earth before Adam ever got there. You've been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, carbuncle, gold, the workmanship of your tablets, tablets and your pipes was prepared in you the day you were created. You are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Lucifer was an anointed cherub. Some say he was the worship leader in heaven. Uh, he said, I uh, anointed you. I've set you on the holy mountain. You've walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in the ways from, in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. And here he tells you how that happened. By the multitude of your merchandise, you've been filled in the midst with violence and you've sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy you and uh, I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire because your heart was lifted up. There it is, the pride. Because of your beauty, you have been corrupted by your own wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you you have defiled the sanctuaries of the multitude. Your iniquities by the iniquity of your traffic. Therefore, will I bring a fire from the midst of you. It'll devour you and I'll bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold. This is Satan's final solution. He is going to be totally destroyed and he is going to be tormented forever and ever, day and night. Now, he is following the same route, if, I please, if you please, as uh, Hitler. He was trying to eradicate God's creation off of the face of the earth. And you're going to see this parallel as we continue. Lies, deception, and the final solution. Join me again tomorrow. Remember Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever in the world you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.